So good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Thanks for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, this is our day of e-learning. Um, Rick, Rick was ahead of me, then it's me, and then John. Um, and today we're talking about our favorite indicators. Um, for those of you that have listened to me before um, in trading, what do you suppose my favorite indicator is? For that. <laughs> yeah. um, price. Yep, um, we often, we run to all of these different things in, in trading. Um, trying to look for something um, in an indicator that may be there, it may not be there, uh, could also give us a false read. Um, and one of the things we spend the least amount of time um, studying is price. So for me, my very favorite indicator is price. Um, without question, I mean leaps and bounds ahead of any other thing on charts. Now, it used to not be that way. And as a matter of fact, when markets are tough, kind of like when they are right now, um, how many of you find yourself trying, you're, you're changing everything up right now? You're trying to develop something new because you've been struggling. You're, you're messing around with your charts. Everything is changing. I heard several questions from folks, um, you know, to Rick um, about, you know, some of the little I call it nitpicky things, you know. I I get questions on, you know, for example, I use a three exponential moving average for the three eight trap on the last. Rick uses it on the high. And everyone's trying to figure out whether which one is the best. It doesn't matter. What matters is how you read that chart and put forward your trade. Um, based on that indicator and you do it consistently. It doesn't matter. The thing that I always recommend when it comes to trading and price action and those kind of things, I saw Rick doing some things in different time frames and stuff, and I think everyone here probably knows I, I just don't do that. And, and I don't because... Um, I have made really bad mistakes in, in my trading, um, trying to do intraday timing and all kinds of things. I, I don't want to be an intraday trader and I don't mind that you are, or if you are, or if you want to be, um, here's my recommendation and that's pick a chart. Pick a time frame and stick with it. Because the more you jump around in price, price action, you can get completely contradictory um, evidence in, in the price action of a chart. And I know at times, particularly like this, when we're, when we're racing to the upside, the fear of missing out comes in and everyone gets oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh I'm missing out I gotta go I, I gotta go faster I gotta do something because I gotta trade this well you know I would say that at this point in time if you're not already in you've kind of missed it Okay. There was no signal. I mean, we came back after a terrible Friday and completely reversed on Monday. There was no clue. 
other than the fact that we were oversold. And I'll show you some indicators that I use a lot for um, seeing that overbought, oversold condition in the market. But whatever time frame it is that you like to trade, if you're an intraday trader, pick your intraday chart and trade that chart. Be consistent in trading that chart. If you're going to be a swing trader, I believe the daily is the chart to trade. Now you can you choose anything you want, but I can show you over and over and over the same patterns repeat themselves. When we make our first high or low, that's the easy upside trade. We have rallied straight up here. We have not made a higher low. Kind of like here. And then we reversed and came all the way back down. Okay. When we have an opportunity for a good, clean upside move, it will always come after a higher low has been placed. And here's the thing we get ourselves all tied up into. And that is... I got to catch the perfect entry at the bottom, and that's just not true. I have built my entire career in trading, never being the first in. I want the institutions to be the first in. I want them to show me where they want to go. And then I trade. And here's the thing, guys. It doesn't matter if it's a daily chart. It doesn't matter if it's an hourly chart. It's always going to be the same. It doesn't matter if it's a 15 minute chart. It will always be the same. The first high or low. So if you want to be bullish anyway, it's always the first high or low. If it's bearish, it's always the first lower high that gives you the clue for the downside move. Every chart, in every time frame, price is by far the most important indicator that you can study. And believe me when I tell you that I understand um, about lots of indicators this is my history lots of fancy colors lots of indicators i can tell you what every single one of those means but i'm going to ask you guys how many of you are going to be able to take something like that and read it consistently based on changes in market conditions And isn't that the key, guys? The change in the market condition? Every market condition change that we have out there gives us different directions in the market. And if we're doing this, we can't even see it. I've got a whole history of losing a lot of money trying to outsmart the market. And I don't want to outsmart the market anymore. I want to follow the market. So as I mentioned in the morning market prep here this morning, to be really careful, what you just heard uh, going off is I had a short trade on the futures. I just made a little futures because I do the exact same thing over and over I look for the failure, the lower high, and I make a trade. If it's the long side, the other day I, I picked up a trade early, really early in the morning. Um, um, it was still oh dark thirty that I that I made five grand on. The price action. It doesn't matter what you trade, what if it's a 
See, doesn't matter if it's futures, doesn't matter, whatever it is. This is a 333 tick chart. And the same thing is true. The lower high creates a lower low. The general rule. Now, no big deal on that, 125 bucks, who cares? But that's, that's change. But when you do that over and over and over, so far this year, that's added up to over $75,000. I don't try to time the tops. I don't try to time the bottoms. I wait for the institutions to show me where they want to go, and then I trade. I trade less without all of the fancy colors and fancy indicators show me direction in the market. The next thing you can do that's probably, and you guys see me do this all the time, I mean all the time, is I take a chart and to help me identify patterns, I look for those price areas in the chart that show me trend and down channel that show me price resistance. That show me price support. And from there, I can make very good trade decisions in the market. I, I don't need I don't need a MACD. I, I don't need really anything. The, the majority of my trading comes right off of this. It's from this that the three eight I the three eight trap was built. Okay, the way I trade the three eight trap, and there's you know, there's people out there that trade the three eight trap differently than I do. Three eight trap is just a price action following strategy. That's all it is. And it doesn't matter if you use the three or the eight. It doesn't it doesn't matter. What matters is if you're following the price action of the chart. Not trying to predict it. Follow it. Show of hands, guys. How many of you during this tough period of the market have been working on changing everything up? Because it's been tough, it's been challenging, and now you're fighting yourself, changing everything that you do. Because I've, I've been through this cycle many times before, that's what I used to do. I would be bored or whatever, and I'd sit there and I would try to get fancy and change everything up. And when you do that, guys, you're constant, you're never, you're never settled. Now, you don't have to like what I do, and I'm not trying to convince you that this is the only way to trade, because it's not. There's a lot of ways to trade market, but I would really recommend, that's right, pick something and stay the course, Gwen. That's right. Pick something and stay the course. I make really good money doing this, and no one sees me get any, get any fancier than uh, some moving averages and price action and some drawings. If you want to simplify your trading, think about that. Are, are we trying to pre predict the market or are we just trying to follow it? Predicting the market is just bad business in my opinion because there's too many, you know, we try to lean on candlesticks. We try to lean on some indicator or moving averages or, and you know, show of hands. How many times have you guys really thought an indicator was the thing? This is going to do it for me. And it just disappointed you. It didn't make you any money. In fact, there was about as many bad trades as there were good trades. 
it doesn't improve. And the reason is, is because indicators fail just like anything else, because indicators are based on the price action. Price, time, and volume are how all indicators are calculated. Okay, They put a little twist on them. They put some different color in it. They give it a little bit of a spin on how it's plotted on the chart. But those are the three things that are calculated, and it all begins with the price action move. Okay, so whatever you have to do to see price in an effective way, I think is important. When I look at a chart like um, CPB, I don't need indicators to tell me that this is bottoming and coming up, okay? This is a 3A trap. I know it's a 3A trap. And I also know that it's right underneath its 50 day moving average because I've done this so long. But, and I'll, I'll show you that, but here's the 3A trap track. So what's the rules of the 3A trap? It's really simple, okay? When the price of the market crosses back over, three comes above the eight, they all go above the trendinator, which is the 17 EMA, it must hold before there's a trade. Must hold before there's a trade. Because this is the first clue that institutions are supporting the price action of this chart. It's been that way since the beginning of time. It's gonna always be that way. Because institutions can't hide where they're putting the money. Now, we can attempt to time this stuff in here. Oh my gosh, look, we're gapping up. And just get our heads handed to us. Or we can wait for the easier trade right there. I heard somebody talk about LVS. LVS is in the same pattern. LVS is starting to break its 50-day moving average. Notice it's the exact same thing. We cross up here in the chart. This is what I mean for cross up. Three crosses through the eight. Eight crosses through the 17. And we hold. And then buyers step in. Okay. The other part of this that I think is so incredibly important, guys, is when you see this setting up, we don't have to chase the white candle. That's what most people are doing when they buy long. They're chasing this move because they're always scanning at the during the day. They're trying to catch this candle just as it's happening, which is great, you know, if you can do it. But oftentimes we don't see it until here. Well, what if you placed a price alert on this pattern and caught it early? You take less risk to your stop loss. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Because there's too many factors. You know, um, we could have, well, we do. We have the greatest move. We did just a super bullish move going on today. One major thing happens over there in the Middle Eastern War, and it reverses. And there won't be any indicator that'll tell you that's going to happen. Not one. Something changes in China, everything changes, market changes. There's no indicator that's going to tell you that. Price is the only thing that matters. And if you put your focus on price, we can see this trade coming and we can be there ahead of time. All you got to do is place a price alert. 
Um, I'm in McDonald's. That was the price alert. It's the exact same pattern, right? Coming up out of that bottom, higher low gets held. Trade. We just closed RBLX. And not because of me, someone else brought this to me um, in the trading room, said, hey, what do you think of this? And I picked up RBLX, RBLX. There's the same pattern. And it, 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 it doesn't require us to be fancy in our trading. It, it requires us to follow a set of rules and be disciplined. So what I do is easy in the sense I just do the same thing over and over. But when it comes to the actual application, it's the di discipline to follow the rules that makes a difference. Uh, T, well, I mean, you can do that, but that's not for me. Um, because remember, breaking the downtrend is the first step. And it doesn't matter what time frame it is. Breaking the downtrend is the first step. Okay, you can break a downtrend and then fail. Go to a new low. Okay, so it doesn't matter what time frame it is you trade. If it's a five minute chart, stock breaks the downtrend, then holds the higher low and buyers step in, now you gotta trade. It's not breaking the trend that matters. Take a look right here. Okay. How many times have we broke the trend only to fail? Right? Break the trend, hold the higher low, and then we're bullish. Okay? And it, it doesn't matter what time frame it is. Um, I showed it over here. That's a downtrend. Lower high. Didn't make a lower low, but that is a downtrend. Just didn't confirm the lower low, but it is the higher low that creates the buy wave. So when it crosses over up, that's not the trade. The trade is when it pulls back and holds. holds. And, and think about this, guys. If, see if this makes some sense to you on the management side of things. Um, if we look at a trade like this and we're moving up in, in a daily chart, I don't care if this is a five-minute chart or whatever it is that you're looking at, okay? If I chase this trade anywhere in here, I have no guarantee of a stop until I get back down here because this is where the buyer stepped up. They didn't step up. All this is is just a race to the top side. But when this occurs and it crosses up and then it holds, I get a place to stop here lower risk right on the short side what I just showed you there in the futures it's the same when this lower high gets put in I make the trade fill me when it falls through here and a stop is automatically set up here and it just follows the trend pattern makes a lower low on a very quick 333 tick chart it works exactly the same as it does in any other time frame so I'm, and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what time frame we trade if I go to a five minute chart So I'm going to ask you, T, on this. 
if we break this trend right here and you buy the crossover, how'd that work on the five minute chart? Probably got stopped out, right? But if you waited for the buyers to step in at the higher low, you have a low risk entry and you won. That makes sense. <clears throat> now let's take a look at again you add in some drawings support resistance and trend okay when we have a downtrend this rally is nothing more than a relief rally That's all it is. It's nothing more than that. It only becomes a bullish trend if we hold a higher low. Doesn't matter if it's here, doesn't matter if it's down here, doesn't matter if it's up here. It only becomes a bullish trend when the higher low has been placed. Okay, so if you want to catch early entries into trades, pick a shorter time frame. Catch the early entries and then trade that chart. Stick with that chart. Um, I have a saying that came from an old uh, John Wayne movie, I think. No, I think it was a... I think it was a Clint Eastwood movie. Dance with the one that brought you. So if it's a 15 minute chart that brings you to the game, brings you to the dance, stick with that. Don't be a jerk. Stick with the chart that brought you to the dance. Trade that chart. If it's the daily chart that brings you to the dance, trade that chart. Okay. Utilizing some of those very, very simple rules. Now, does it work every single time? No, you can get false breaks. That's why we have stop losses, right? But for every one that fails, guys, of these patterns that I've said, for every one that fails, seven, eight plus winners. I don't mind getting stopped out on a failure because that's why I have a stop loss there. I don't like losing money. Don't make make that mistake that I don't care about losing money. I hate losing money. But because I hate losing money, I'm going to take the high probability trade when the higher low gets placed and not until that higher low gets placed. Okay, For me, picking bottoms and tops just created tons of losses. I just didn't make any money doing it. I, I, I would make just enough money from time to time to think I was on the right track, only to lose it all back to the market. Show of hands, how many of you guys have done that? When the market is just clicking and everything is bullish all the time, you can make every mistake in the book and make money. Right? How many of you guys would admit that you have mistaken a bull trend for genius? Because I did a lot of times, thought that I was a genius. Oh my gosh, I got this. This is easy. Just a really strong bullish trend that made it easy. Okay. So think about that. Now, when it comes to directional shifts, in the market. Um, my favorite indicators are, are the T20s and and um, I don't use the T2123. Um, and 
I, I would say mostly because, and Rick said it, um, if if it's on the daily chart, you're way late. It, it just it doesn't work on the daily chart. You've got to go to an intraday time frame to try and time frame your daily chart. I, I don't care about that. I don't want to do that. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying not interested. Okay. But the T2122 lets me know to start watching for the bullish reversal. Okay. We're oversold to start watching for the bullish reversal. Doesn't, doesn't tell me the exact second it's going to occur. See, again, I'm not about, I, I'm not about timing the bottom or timing the top. Now I'll use credit spreads and stuff like that or around that where I'm very defensive in those trades to do that kind of positioning. If I mean, um, credit spreads are really good at that kind of thing. But what it's telling me here is get rid of my short positions and start watching for long trades. When I'm up here, get rid of my long trades. Start watching for short trades. Okay? And this never locks. It, it can't. It can be... It can give you a signal and you think, oh, it's got to happen tomorrow. No, it doesn't ever have to happen tomorrow. Okay. But it's on the way and you got to wait for it. Okay. And the reason is, is because it's just a ratio of new highs and new lows. It cannot lie. It always tells us when we're oversold and when we're overbought. It can't, it, it really can't do anything else. And if we don't use this as the, this has to trigger on the exact day, no, it's telling us to start watching for the shift. Start watching for the shift to occur. And then look to your charts and the price action of your charts to identify those price patterns. That's all it is. It's just, it's keeping us in sync with the flow of the market. Okay, It's not timing our entries. Price does that. It's telling us where our attention should be. Okay, for the shift, for the look. Right? So, keep an eye on T2122, but don't look at it as, and, and I think too many people do, they look at this and say, well, this this didn't, you know, it, it was going down on Friday. It it, it, it it didn't allow me to jump right on um, on Monday morning and just take advantage of this entire move to the upside. No, it didn't because nothing did that. Not Not a thing did that. Nothing. Wasn't an indicator that did that. Not one. Now, if you had been listening to me, we were looking for bull put credit spreads when this was here. In fact, we were kind of frustrated in RWO because we were looking and looking and looking for bull put credit spreads. And they just weren't providing premium to make them while. Guess what? They're providing bear call credit spread premiums right now. Do the exact same thing when we start reaching an overbought condition in the market. When we're down here, start closing out your short trades. Start looking for longs. You're up here. Start closing out your long trades. Start looking for short, the reversal. Okay. T2108 is more of an internal in the market. And this has been something that was, boy, it really had a tough time getting started until yesterday. Um, we were getting these 
big point moves in the market, but T2108, the percentage of stocks above the 40-day moving average was barely moving. It just couldn't get any traction. So think about it, guys. If the market's coming up in big point moves, but stocks are not moving back up above the 40-day the moving average, what's happening? Short covering. It's not really people buying. It's not really anybody buying. It's short covering that was occurring until yesterday afternoon where we finally got some enthusiasm to move to the upside. Okay. That changes this. Then we start having stocks coming above the 40-day moving average. We start breaking resistance levels. We start breaking downtrends in the chart. So this is another one to be watching for clues, not when the market's going to shift, but it's getting close. You start looking for long trades, other than short trades. And we want to see this progress in an up move the same way we progressed in a down move. We challenge price resistance levels in the chart, we break through them, and then we prove to hold. like it did right there. When we break down, we make lower highs and we fail. For stocks holding above the 40 is not bullish. More stocks holding above or crossing above its 40 is bullish. Now just prove to hold. Don't whipsaw back down, prove to hold. Same as T2107, the percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average. And boy, oh boy, did this have a hard time getting moving. In fact, today was the first day it really made a move. We, we had a, a, a change yesterday afternoon where it popped up. But the small caps were not moving at all. And one of the reasons is because there's no big tech giants in the small caps. Um, it, what we're seeing right now is predominantly the tech giants that are lifting the market and creating that enthusiasm to the upside. We're not seeing it in the small caps at all. In fact, we haven't even broken the downtrend. This is the first day we've really even made a nice little push to come back up and even challenge resistance in the chart. So once again, this is a relief rally. It's a relief rally until we can prove that we can hold a higher low. Okay. We've had moves, sharp bounces that can't hold the higher low, and then we keep moving down. We need to hold some higher lows. Market. It's that simple. And then T2101, I know folks get really confused on T2101 because it's not directionally based. What it is is the market breadth. So think of it as a mo momentum. Okay. Where's the momentum in the market? Okay. Well, since we've started this big rally to the upside, where's the momentum been? Moving down. Short covering. Okay, we today is the first day since we started this rally to the upside that our momentum has turned positive that we've kicked up. This was our last sell wave right here. The market that definitely showed us that the bears were in control. Okay, this is just starting to hint that the bulls are gaining ground. Okay, notice that the bears were able to push through this big downtrend in here. The bulls have yet to be able to do that. So let me ask you guys this question. If we're really stretched out, I mean, 
we're up I don't know what the point number is 1500 points on the Dow since this rally started maybe more and our breadth on the rally is still well below the breadth on the sell wave do you guys think that we're probably nearing a top not saying we're there but we're nearing that top where we'll either rest, go sideways, or we'll pull back to try and determine whether or not we can hold a higher low. Because we're still not getting that engagement with tremendous momentum that's overcoming the sell waves here in the market. That's why I continue to say what we're seeing in the market right now is a relief rally and, and nothing else until something changes there. Is that making some sense, guys? You know, nobody's talking much. Um, nobody's asking questions or anything. You guys getting anything out of this? I, I'm telling you that for me, when I got simple in my trading, just focused in on some very simple things in the, in, in the market, my trading changed. It didn't require me to be any kind of a Superman trader. It, thank you guys. It didn't require me to pick tops and bottoms. I could remove all of that stress and just say, okay, if you if this is going to be bullish, prove it to me. Prove it to me. Because trust me on this, guys, you don't have to be in this to make money. It's nice that you if you are, you can make some money in here. But the real easy money is going to come if this downtrend. If all of a sudden we're going to be bullish in the market, and we could, no, nothing saying that we can't. If we're going to be bullish in the market and this downtrend breaks and holds, trust me, over here, the entries get way easier. You're going to take less risk in them. And the odds of winning vastly higher. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to take trades that don't give me high odds. I mean, anybody can do that. Anybody can throw money at the market and hope something sticks, okay? But if we wait for those higher patterns to occur, it gets easy after that for a while. I mean, I mean easy. You don't have to take high risk trades. Okay. Now, everyone's got a different risk tolerance, and that's fine. You can do whatever you want there. I'm really picky about the trades I take. And, and I've said this before. If I could find a way that I could make one trade and make, make my 20% goal every year, that's exactly what I would do. I would just, because that's all I want to do. I, I want to make 20% or better a year, and then I want to do what I want to do. I don't want, I'm, I'm not sitting here in front of the screen because I just cannot stand. Um, I, I got to put money at risk today. That's not my purpose of being here. My purpose of being here is to make money. So I want to make as few a trades as possible with the highest quality trades. Keep that win-loss ratio high. And I say it all the time, trade less and make more. And you can do that by reading price action and keeping your trading simple, okay? Now beyond that point, guys, um, what's the, what indicators are the very best for um, tracking price action? Just gonna be moving averages, you know? Um, moving averages, there's, there's no magic and you can use any moving average you want. But a moving average tells us 
where price is being supported or price is being resisted. Okay, we're coming into a level here in the diamonds that's going to be a colossal resistance area, not only in price but in moving averages. Okay, so this is a time I want to be closing out long positions by and large, and I want to be looking for short trades. In fact, just be just before I came on the mic, um, I was actually looking and potentially laying out a bear call credit spread here on the diamonds. Just looking for this to do its job. Resistance and downtrend to do its job and see this rest or pull back so I can make money on it. Okay. Um, nothing fancy. Just the same thing over and over and over for me. Um, so simple simple moving average charts however you want to lay them out I don't care what I don't care if it's a high I don't care if it's a low I don't care if it's logarithmic or algorithmic I don't I don't care I don't care what time frame it is as long as you use them consistently there are patterns that get made over and over and over in moving averages and you can use any moving averages to do this it Two opposing moving averages in time do the same thing over and over and over. Okay, it, it's when we fail at a 50-day moving average, start looking for the 200-day moving average to be attacked. Okay, when we rally back in the chart, look for the 50-day moving average to be tested and attacked. That's where failures occur. It's also where the buy can occur if we can break through there and hold. And it doesn't matter what time frame that you trade that on. If, if I take this to a 15 minute chart, you guys see the trades right here, right? Break the downtrend. Hold the higher low. Set price alerts and wait for the trade. If we go to an hourly chart, the hourly chart, the higher low was here. We're still underneath the 50, but there's the higher low worked. There's above the 50. Same price pattern, same result. A winning trade. And it's going to work on every chart, every time frame, every charting. I don't care if you trade currency. I don't care if you trade futures. Whatever it, commodities, it doesn't matter. Whatever you trade, it's always the same. Price cannot lie to you if you focus on the price. The three eight trap, there's no magic in the three, the eight, and the 17. None whatsoever. The purpose of it, the reason I like teaching it is it helps people see that this right here on the daily chart is not an entry signal yet. That's the crossover. We've done that plenty of times and failed. That is not the long signal. The signal occurs when the higher low gets put in. And that's going to be the lower risk trade and it's going to be the higher probability win. So wait for it. And if I take this to the hourly, it's going to be exactly the same way. Crossed over up and held. That is the higher probability win. Every time. Cross down. Fail up against this. It's the higher probability win on a short. Every time. 
Go to a 15 minute. Still true on the 15 minute. It is exactly the same on the 15 minute. Go to a five minute. It is exactly the same on the five minute. If I go to a 333 tick in futures, it is exactly the same on the 333 tick chart. Okay, so, and it doesn't matter here, it really doesn't matter if you use a three if that's a 5 and a 10, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. The only purpose of those indicators are to help you see the pattern developing. That's the only purpose. It's not the trade signal. The trade signal is the price. When you see this occurring on whatever time frame, set a price alert and wait for the trade. That's all. It's not the trade signal. Price is the trade signal. Okay, it's not the indicator. So I don't care what indicator you use. As long as there are two opposing time frames that helps you see that bullish technical pattern, and that is we've broken a downtrend, we hold a higher low. That's the beginning of an uptrend. By the way, it's the only way an uptrend begins. It can't begin any other way. It doesn't matter if it, it's a shallow move to the upside or if it's a move that comes clear up here and pulls back. The uptrend begins at the higher low. Okay. Any questions on any of that, guys? I've run a little bit long here, like always. Um. I don't um, just I've got volume on here and I've got balance of power and it's only been on it's been on here for so many years it's just there uh, balance of power I can do a class on that sometime and show you how I use that it's not the indicator it used to be and the reason is is because of the dark pool volume particularly intraday is worthless And the reason is, is because so much of the trading that happens during the day, we cannot see. All the corporate buybacks, all of the things that get traded in the dark pool don't get consolidated to the market until the end of every day. Go to a short term time, about 10 minutes before the market closes, we will sometimes get more volume in the last 10 minutes of the day than we've had all day long. Those are trades that have already been made in the dark pool and the institution if, from the institutions and they're just being consolidated to the market at the end of every day. Volume, intraday, pretty much worthless because we don't get to see most of it. Okay. Uh, Karen, um, that's just the thinkorswim charts. And like I said, it, it's a 333 tick. That's what I use. I, there's no magic in that. Um, I've just done it for years and years and years. Um, and, and by the way, when I intraday trade, and this is why I don't intraday trade, I only trade this chart. This is a, the Dow Jones E-mini futures. It's the only intraday chart I ever trade. The only one. I, I, don't, I don't look at any other futures. I trade one chart intraday, period. Last year I made 125, 27, I can't remember, 120 some thousand dollars. 
and I don't trade it very much. I trade the same patterns over and over when I have time to look at it. Okay. Um, I don't need to be looking at every chart. Uh, trade less, make more. Simplify, make more. I trade one chart intraday. And I make more money trading one chart intraday than a lot of people make their whole year trading. Chasing around trying to trade everything that's popping and hopping and moving around. No, the faster you go, simplify more. I make more money trading occasionally doing the same patterns one chart. Okay, so pick something. Trade the same patterns over and over and trust me, the longer you do it, the better you get at it. The more competent you get at it, the longer you watch a chart, the more, the, the more competent you are at trading it. You know when to trade, when not to trade. Um, Jerry, these classes will, um, once we get them rendered, um, they will be um, posted. Well, maybe if Ed's listening, he can, he can give you that, but they're posted to the website. Okay, so they're all out there posted to the website. They're member only, okay. So they're not out there for other things, they're member only. Okay. Um, any other questions that I can help with? John needs to get in here. So I better, I better back away. If you got something really quick, I'll answer it. But, and, and here's the thing, guys. I don't want you to take my word for it, for it. Don't take my word for this. Don't look at it. Repeat it over and over and over. Study it. You're going to find it's true. I, I, I have 100% confidence you're going to find exactly what I told you to be true. Go prove me wrong. Okay, go prove me wrong. I look for the 3 8 trap with the LTA, live trading alerts. Very simple. I look for the same things over and over. I don't, again, I don't need to trade everything in the market. I don't need to chase every stock that's moving. I only need a few good quality trades. I can make all kinds of money. I just need a few good quality trades. Okay, keep it simple. You're welcome. Hope you guys got something out of that. Um, John, sorry, I'm dropping. Stop the recording.